بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما O oh Allah, help us learn what is beneficial to us. Help us benefit from what you have enabled us to learn and increase our knowledge. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to our first lesson of Quranic Arabic course. The first topic covers some of the basic essentials for Quranic Arabic language. And they are short vowel, Long vowel, sukun, tanween, waqf, shadda, and difference between ta marbuta and ta maftuha. It is important to ensure that everyone is familiar with them. First of all, let's get familiar with a few terminologies. In Arabic, these signs are called harakat. Depending on the harakat used, the meaning of the words and its role in the sentence is determined. These harakats are Fatah, Kasra, Dhamma, and Tanveen. Harakat is also called in Arabic Tashkil. In English, they are known as diacritic. Harakat, short vowel marks. The harakat, which literally means motions, they are the short vowel marks. There is some ambiguity about Tanveen if this is also a harakat or not because tanween is a marker for both vowels and consonants, while short vowels are only used as vowels. Okay, let's start. First, we shall talk about short vowels. There are just six vowels in Arabic. Three short vowels, a, e, u, and three long vowels, a, e, and u. Short vowels in Arabic are used in all three types of words, or in Arabic they are called kalima. The words are harf, fil, and ism. In English, we have five vowels, a, e, i, o, u. But in Arabic, we have six vowels, three short vowels and three long vowels. Short vowels make a short sound as a, e, u, which is indicated by their harakat with fatah, kasra, or dhamma. Here are some examples. When harakat fatah is used, the sound is like a. Example, ka, ba, ta. When harakat kasra is used, the sound is e. Examples, ki, b, ti. When harakat dhamma is used, the sound is u. Examples, ku, bu, tu. Let's talk about sukun. Sukun is used to mark the absence of a vowel and it means still or rest. It is represented by a small circle above the letter. Depending on the mushaf, sukun can appear in three different ways as you can see on the slide. The examples of sukun are min, kul, kum. Let's talk about long vowels. Long vowels in Arabic are used in two types of words or kalima, and they are fi'il or ism. The long vowels in Arabic are a, e, u. They are written by using three of the letters in the Arabic alphabet. The letter alif is used in the long vowel a. The letter ia is used in the long vowel e. The letter waw is used in the long vowel wu. Long vowels stress upon a given vowel. Same thing exists in English. The word exceed should be stressed in the vowels e or lose the stress on the u. The examples of long vowels. Using dhamma followed by waw, rasulun, ghafurun, yumfiqun. Using fata followed by an alif, Qala, Razakna, Kitabun, using Kasra followed by a Ya, Ibrahim, Karimun, Yuqimun. Let's look at Tanvin. The English word for Tanvin means nunation. 
only ism or nouns get tanvin. They are called fata tanvin, kasra tanvin, or dhamma tanvin, based on the haraka in the last letter. Tanvin can only come at the end of the word. Nouns with tanvin are also called heavy isms, and when tanvin is replaced with single haraka, it becomes light ism. One instance when an ism with tanvin becomes light, when al comes before the ism. For example, shamsun becomes ashamsu, muslimun becomes al muslimu. Alif is always added with fata tanvin at the end. For example, shamsin, shamsun, there is no alif at the end, but when it is fata tanvin, then it becomes shamsa. Generally, tanvin is used to distinguish nouns from other parts of the speech and indicate that the noun with which it is used is indefinite. To make the noun definite, the tanvin is removed and replaced by a single short vowel. Let's talk about waqf. The waqf means stop while reading the Quran. There are many rules and signs of stopping when reading Quran. We have shown only a few here. However, these are taught as a part of Tazbid class. What is relevant here for us is that you don't pronounce the last vowel when you recite. However, it is recommended to pronounce the last vowel for learning Quranic Arabic grammar that we should be doing throughout this course, inshallah. Let's talk about Shadda. Shadda is equivalent to writing the same letter twice. Shadda always will have a vowel mark accompanied with it. The first letter with Shadda will have Sukun, and the second letter will have Fata, Dhamma, or Kasra. Here are some examples. Rabb. There is no Haraka on the Shadda here. So with Haraka, Rabb will become either Rabba or Rabbu or Rabbi. When it is Rabba, it becomes Rab, Ba with Sukun, and then last Ba with Fatah. Rabbu will have Rab with Sukun on Ba and Dhamma on the last Ba. Rabbi. Rab will have Sukun on Ba and Kasra on the last letter Ba. Similarly, Massa. It's mas sa, masu, it's mas su, then mas si, it's mas si. Adding shadda to a word may change the meaning completely. Here are some examples. Fahima means he understood. Fahama means he explained. Fahim means explain. It's an order. Let's look at the difference between ta marbuta and ta maftuha. Ta maftuha and ta marbuta, they look different, but there are some similarities here. Ta maftuha is open ta, and ta marbuta is closed ta. If you think about a bag, when it is tied up, it is closed. Ta maftuha looks like an open bag. Ta maftuha is always pronounced as ta regardless of any vowel. That is, Fatah, Kasra, Dhamma, or Sukun, or Tanvin. Examples, Bint, Bintun, Bintan, Bintin, Albinta, Albinti, Albintu. Ta Maftuha is used with singular nouns, such as Beit means house, and Ukht means sister. Ta Maftuha is used with feminine plural nouns, such as Binat, girls and muallimat, female teachers. Ta maftuha is also used with verbs as a feminine marker, like zahabat, she went, and katabat, she wrote, and as part of the verb such as mata, he died, sakata, he stopped talking. On the other hand, ta marbuta is pronounced as ha when we stop on it as waqf. In other words, it has a sukun on it. Ta marbuta with any vowel, that is fatah, kasra, dhamma, or sukun, or tanvin, it is pronounced in the same way as ta. Examples of ta marbuta sounding as ha. Shajara, ashajara, that means tree. Tawila and at-tawila, 
means tall. Here, ta marbuta is pronunciated as ha. Let's look at ta maftuha and some examples. Tawilatan, tawilatin, tawilatun, attawilata, attawilati, attawilatu. On these examples, ta marbuta is pronunciated as ta. Please note, ta marbuta is used as a feminine marker for proper nouns. I hope you found this video helpful. My request to you, please repeat watching this video a few more times. Inshallah. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk